Now, thank you so much for King's College, for King's College for hosting the event. It's a really, really privilege to, to be here to open it up and to see you all here in the room. Um, it's a wonderful thing, and uh, thank you especially, I think, to Simon, a former colleague as well, uh, for doing a lot of the work, and also to everybody who's sponsored and uh, is speaking and has worked on the organization of the event. And I think especially uh, thank you to all of you for coming. Um, a bit about me, you've, you've already heard. Um, so I founded the project, uh, the that project, and been involved with it for a very long time, it feels. And um, yeah, my, my current role, uh, CTO of uh, sitting this group in the past, I've been uh, with Kineo and also involved with Tatara. I've got a real strong interest in open source and learning technology. So if that's of interest to you, please do feel free to get in touch. I'd love to hear from you and, uh, and have a chat. And I've said before, it's a privilege to, to be here, stand in front of you and talk about uh, that. This feels a little bit like the graduation of one of, one of my babies, if you like, at least I feel very involved in it. Um, and um, you, can, you can see that the DAP has grown into its, own, it's into its own thing, really. It's got its own purpose, it's got its own identity, it's got its own vision and mission, it's got its own career, and I'd like to say it's got its own family and friends, really, and that's you guys here. So I really appreciate you coming. And um, while I have a fatherly relationship with Adapt, I'll, I'll come clean right now and say I'm not the, uh, the original developer or designer of the technology itself. I've just helped put the open source project together. And that's been, that's been the privilege that I've had. But I will also shout out to the designer and developer as part of the proper presentation to give credit where it's due, really. Um, as part of this session, it's just the opening session. So I want to talk about where that came from. And by that, I don't mean Kineo Learning Full Sponge. I actually want to look at the seed and the DNA in that seed out of which Adapt grew and some of the big ideas behind it. Um, I'd like to uh, look at where Adapt is right now. And I'll allow myself to obsess about stats, which uh, for those of you who know me, now I can spend a bit of time looking at Google and, and all of those things. Um, I'll give you an insight also into what the project has looked like through my eyes. Um, and that's really what those little pictures are there for. So, you know, watch out for them. All of those are relevant to the project and its history. And you can see there, that's the mood board that we put together when we first created the visual identity of the DAP. So, um, have a look out for those. And then finally, I'd also like to give you a glimpse into the future of the DAP and talk about some of the big ideas that are kicking about at the moment. Um, for those of you who are expecting me to cover the roadmap, I'm sorry, I'll disappoint you. I'll leave that to the other speakers and maybe in questions uh, later on, which there will, of course, also be time for. But let's look at opening the seed. ADAPT was founded in 2013, and there were some big ideas behind it. And these are some of those big ideas. And if you remember, at the time, that was when mobile device devices had just taken hold, and Flash was no longer the solution to, to what we were doing back then. And the whole industry found itself in the same boat. The content providers, generic content, historic <coughs> content, authoring tools. All of us were looking at, OK, we've, we've got to now meet this demand for what I like to call single source, multi-device e-learning. We've got to solve that technology problem. And, um, and really, all of us were developing uh, tools and frameworks that would help us do that. We're all in the same boat, we're all doing the same thing. And really that led us to the question of, well, if that's what we're all doing, then are we really differentiating on technology? And you know, is it not something that we could share? What we found is that um, really six months down the line, if we, were, if we were just carrying on with what we're doing, developing our own solutions, which we develop and main, maintain at our own time, at our own cost, um, we were missing an opportunity. And what we thought is, well, if we share it, there are some opportunities to it. And those opportunities are quite significant. But before that, what we said is that technology is not the differentiator. It's not what makes us unique. Because really what makes us unique, and back then, remember, was working as a service provider for bespoke content and platforms, was the customer service, was the creativity, was the quality of the materials that we had, was the understanding of what the learners needed and was the relationship that we had with the people who we were working with and working for. So all of that, all of that led to this what if moment of, well, what if we share it? If it doesn't make us unique, we share it. What are the opportunities in that? And we found um, 
the opportunities to be quite significant. We always like to stir up the market and sort of put a bomb under the proprietary uh, systems that there are and, and try and create something new, try and create reasons for innovation and ways to innovate. And Adapt allowed us to do it. Um, but how and why does open source uh, stir up innovation? Well, it's because it solves a given problem and it puts the solution there and makes that available for everybody. So really what it does is it changes the starting point. And if you remember a few years back before Adapt existed, there were authoring tools there. There were potentially frameworks there which, which you could do, but there wasn't as easy a starting point for, for us all to go and say, okay, I'll start with that, and now I can build on top of that, and now I can find new solutions to new problems. So um, it changes the starting point. It enables us also to collaborate uh, on a grand scale, and it focuses us to add value elsewhere to our learners, to our clients, whatever we do, because the technology question is solved. Mm -hmm. um, what it also does is it challenges the proprietary alternatives, because no longer can they demand cash for things that exist freely in the marketplace as well, so they've got to do one better. And you can see the whole market moves on. Um, and in that, I think it's worth also looking at the proprietary software model and how that's changed. And I've cheekily put, it's out of date here. And there have been major changes to it, in the sense that a few years back I was buying software packages for 50 to 80 pounds off the shelf. They came in an actual box, I could put them on my shelf. Um, I could squeeze them for a few years, I could try and get the most out of it. And then after a few years I'd maybe buy the upgrade and squeeze that for as long as I reasonably could. Um, and that's really all changed because nowadays um, I can go on and buy apps which are fantastically powerful and they cost you know, potentially between one and five pounds on average. Or I can subscribe to um, the, the latest software by a subscription model. And what that's really doing is it's changed how, um, how proprietary software works in the sense that what we're now buying is we're buying the service, we're no longer buying the software itself. And the service gives us access to the latest technology, to the latest uh, feature set. It's probably supported and hosted professionally somewhere, so there's a lot more service uh, to it. And really, I think at that point, when you look at open source and when you look at the proprietary model, they aren't all that different anymore. And in that, open source has also become a lot more accepted and understood. Um, but where they are so different, which is why I've got a strong belief in open source, is that with open source solutions, uh, it's a lot more open. So the biggest difference, I think, is in who can use it. Open source is there for everybody to help themselves to. Who can build on it? Who controls the roadmaps? Um, and also, who can make money from it? And in those aspects, the proprietary model still has significant limitations, which we can overcome here with open source. In my personal experience, um, especially when I was working as the product director for Totara LMS, I found that in learning and development, our industry and our people in general are very, very open to working together. They're excited about solving problems together. And I was working back then with companies like Tesco's, BP, Coles Department Store, Specsavers, who were all helping to define what does the product need to do next and where are the gaps. And they were helping not only in the sense of um, working out what the requirements are and telling us that, but they were actually really also funding the development of the product. And in that comes the point that we can all something, achieve something together which we couldn't really do by ourselves. And that's also true in the sense of adapting that a few years back. All of the partners who are now involved wanted and needed a technology solution. They wanted and needed an authoring tool. And all of a sudden it's there. And that we couldn't do by ourselves. And we couldn't have done it in such a way that we'd also make a difference globally to, to all of you. So that is... Uh, behind the seat. But in that, we also have to, um, we also have to uh, ask ourselves really, well, these are some of the great and big ideas, but we need to reconcile them with the sound business reasons that we needed as collaborating companies in order for us to go and share the solution, in order for us to create the open source project. And these are some of the reasons behind it that convinced the people who were involved in running various businesses to create the project and to join the project and to make all of this happen in the first place. And one of the first and, and biggest ones is probably that we all share the cost uh, of developing and maintaining 
the solution. And that means that we can refocus that because we can either pass that on to our customers uh, and add value elsewhere, or we can, um, <laughs> yeah, we can look at yeah, better value for customers in other places, not the technology solution. We can also benefit from each other's ideas. So any bug that gets fixed on the project gets fixed for everybody. Every feature that gets fixed or gets created on the project gets created for everybody. And that means that there's a, a much greater scale that we can achieve with the project. We can disrupt the marketplace and become the leading edge. And this is what happened for, I think, all, most of us anyway, uh, where by open sourcing, by sharing the technology, we are creating a lot of visibility, which brings us goodwill as companies. It creates a solution, and it also creates opportunities for us as companies commercially, as much as for the team in the sense that um, all of a sudden we're hopefully doing interesting work uh, for the team, while at the same time giving something back as well. And especially from my point of view, being very interested in open source, I was always interested in seeing if we can be good open source citizens, give something back. Uh, while at the same time also doing something positive for the industry. So, so that's the reason for why, uh, why we did it. And uh, in that, we had to realize a number of things. And, and the most important realization, this is a very, very easily summarized slide, it's really mostly about the people. And this is something that most successful open source projects share. They share an active and helpful community they have ambassadors, they've got a recognizable brand, they have goodwill in the industry. And of course they do have to fix a problem that exists in the marketplace, but the technology is actually very often secondary, and, and we realized very early on, and have probably behaved in, very, in that way, that the people are very, very important in that. And what we also want to do is just to make sure it's very easy to get into the project, um, so a low barrier to adoption helps. Um, I've, I've promised briefly to give you an insight into what the project looked like in my eyes, from my point of view, and that's what I wanted to do here. So it looked a bit like that, um, to me anyway, and you can see it's mostly people, and it's been a hell of a lot of fun, I have to say. It's been wonderful to, to do that. It's been a real ride. It hasn't always been easy, um, but uh, it has never been boring, and it's felt like a really good thing to do, a good thing to achieve. And while we're here, I'd just like to say thank you to Paul and Daryl in the corner up there, who are the original designer and developer of the system. Um, uh, so credit where credit is due. And in, in all that, we've um, come away, and I've definitely come away with uh, some very, very fond memories. Uh, and <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so it included Guinness. Um, and on balance, I don't think I've got that many memories after those four days. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it seemed it seemed all right at the time. Yeah, and what would it include? Presentations to to people like this one, webinars, um, award presentations, so going up for awards, winning awards, the project logo turning up at major conferences in quite a big way, um, unicorns, well, got <laughs> unicorns, and then that is an interesting picture here. This is our last adapt meter, and that's where you can see I'm actually very very pleased to be in a big room with a lot of people. Um, so yeah, so this was a few years back and the project certainly come a long way and I'm very, very pleased that you're here and that we're able to, to share this. And that's, um, that's all very beautiful, but does it really work? Does it make a difference? And yes, I believe it does. So here's some pictures <coughs> that tell you about where we are right now. We've got visitors from 211 countries. If you asked me, I'd struggle to name 50, but you know, even in that sense, Adapt is helpful in that it teaches me that. It is actually something that's, uh, that's global. We've got a thriving community, very, very helpful place. Um, and you've got to remember as well that uh, we don't really see the tip of the iceberg. We've consciously chosen not to ask for any email addresses because people might worry about being spammed. We've really left the barrier to entry very, very low. Um, and what we see is just a bit of the iceberg, but you can see large user numbers, many people involved in the direct chats, a whole wealth of knowledge in the discussion forums there, 15 pages worth, and that's only what's written down. Great partners, we've won awards, we've won four awards uh, in succession, and those were of most innovative e-learning design technology. 
that was the same award four years in a row. We <coughs> thought, surely you're going to lose credibility giving us that. But they did anyway. And I think it, it sends a loud and clear message. Uh, obviously, we're very, very organized. Uh, every sprint looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blatant lie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe not quite. And uh, the community, I'm not sure if you can see, there are 127 plugins um, at this point. So that was yesterday or the day before. So obviously the community is contributing. The project itself has put out, I think, around about 38 or so, and we're maintaining 28. Uh, 127, obviously, quite a lot there coming from the community. And uh, where that leads us to is, uh, of course, world domination, <laughs> which is, uh, the, <laughs> which is uh, the Google map. And, and really, I guess, um, that's what we want to do. We, just, we do want to make a difference, um, and we do want people to take it up. But we also want to make sure that we are relevant. And there's some really nice side effects in that it has just broken down barriers between organizations. So the technical teams now work across competitor organizations. We can really share this. We can learn from each other. Uh, some really interesting things there. We've got partnerships developing among partners so they can take on bigger projects. And to a degree, by everybody using this, by this being out there, we're sort of standardizing a little bit on what to expect from responsive design. And um, there is recognition for those that are doing the work. So this is quite different because it's open source. Those that are putting the work in will be seen. That's the designers and developers of the thing, not the CEO of the company. And that's quite a big difference as well. And at the same time, people are getting work. We've got a jobs forum. We've got people recruiting for adapt developers out there. Um, and there are some very well-known names, which I'm not quite sure I can name here. But uh, if you look around, there is plenty happening behind it. And at the same time, companies are building revenue on it, and we're able to, to sustain like a whole industry, and hopefully more so in the past. But we're also aware of other proof of relevance in the industry, and that's when you look at um, HTML5, uh, HTML5 responsive design, that's not very much the standard, that's not very much expected. Um, but what you can also see is that the proprietaries are following suit. So we have set quite a high bar on the output of responsive content, so what's being produced out of the out authoring tool with the framework, and companies like Articulate, Lectora, Goma are all following suit. Um, so you can you can tell we are in the right space, and we are groundbreaking that. And interestingly, also just on the just on the numbers and the proprietaries, talking about uh, the pricing models. When talking to Brandon Hall of the past two months, we we found out you know, a bit more about the pricing models of uh, all three tools that exist. And really, they confirmed that it's mainly aimed at the, um, well, I think the English-speaking market, US market, UK market, Australia, but ultimately um, at a market which can afford a solution um, like those proprietary authoring tools. Now, ours is free, and the rest of the world might not always be able to afford it. There might be organizations here in education, further education, um, public sector, SMEs, who cannot necessarily afford an authoring tool that is proprietary and set at the bar that you might find some of the others at. Adapt is a real no-brainer, and, uh, and we're proud of that. So the question is, are we nearly there yet? Well, we're not quite. We know there's lots to do. And what I wanted to do is just quickly step through the vision statement and say, oh, here are maybe some areas that we're still working on. So we said to create, as a community, the leading edge a leading e-learning authoring tool for producing uh, responsive content. And I'd say this, our output is very much setting a high bar, but the authoring tool has got some way to go. It's on the map, though. It definitely is on the map. And I'd like to say thank you to Fosway Group for the nine grid model there. You can see Adapt in the corner here, waiting to explode. Um, <coughs> and we are on the map, and we know we've got some way to go for it. So we're not stopping here. We've got more to do, and we're looking forward to doing it. On the other item here, develop a freely available authoring tool um, to develop responsively learning content, particularly in education, commercial companies, public sector organizations. I think we're doing well on that. I think people are taking it up. But there are still some barriers that we'd like to overcome, especially when it comes to how easy it is to install and how feature-rich the authoring tool is. And maybe removing the need for having to be uh, technically skilled to use all of the features. 
Um, we'd like to encourage a large global community of end users, and I think we're doing well on that. If you've seen the blue on the, on the map, I think we are reaching out and reaching quite a lot of people, but there can always be more. And I'd like to make a call to all of you here today, um, if you could do me a favour and just tell everybody about Tadapt. Uh, send them to our site, that'd be wonderful. So there's always more. Then finally, ensuring that the tool is intuitive, uh, able to be used with limited technical knowledge, I've said already, we're working on some of the technical knowledge things. The items there in particular are theming and installation. Um, but we have got some very positive comments from people using the tool uh, and telling us this is very intuitive to use. The features that are there, I'm happy with, I can use them. It's going well. Finally, uh, to ensure the authoring tool produces content uh, which can be employed to, uh, deployed to a typical environment. That's an interesting point because, well, yes, it can, but the typical environment itself is moving on. So what we have now is we've got learning record stores in the mix. We've got XAPI uh, in that. And at this point, I'd like to just give a shout to uh, another open source project which I think is groundbreaking. It's Learning Locker. Um, I've been involved in it, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's gone out there. Um, and it's wonderful. And it's something you can use. It's something that works with Adapt as well. And we've got people in the community working on different streams that are keeping it and making it relevant uh, and moving <coughs> with the times as well. Then one final thing. So transitioning to a community-led governance structure. Again, I think we're doing that. This is a working model. Uh, and having talked through with the steering group uh, recently about where we are so we can continue on this vein that we're at right now. Um, or we can try and think of some of the big ideas. How can we really speed up? What can we do to harness the potential? Everybody agreed that, yes, there has been great success, but there's still great potential, and that's what we want to unlock. Um, so that's where we're considering a step change, and I wanted to tell you that briefly. What might that look like? We'd be very interested in getting funding into the project. We'd be very interested in incorporating, so creating a company, and setting up professionally. We'd be very interested in professionalizing the partner model and enticing more partners to join us and making it easier as well for partners to join us so that we can potentially speed up development, potentially pay for development, reach out further, go to, go to various conferences um, and be present there. So one of those big things for us is uh, the Learning Technologies UK conference. Uh, we are there, that's tomorrow and the day after, we're on stand H9 very much welcome you to come to that and to tell people to come to that. Uh, and as part of that, we're actually also actively encouraging community meetups like this one. Uh, we're signing up partners and driving the benefits to the partners. So we're thinking on various steps there. And we're also encouraging commercial services built on Adapt. And in fact, there are several presentations in the uh, beginner's track today where you can see what people have been doing it and what service you can, you can get. Um, and because this is an exciting new phase, I'd just like to say, Chuck, thank you very much for being part of the Zoom group, working your way into and through the project. Um, and just like to tell everybody that uh, Chuck's here to help us explore the next phase. So he'll be leading the project for the next six months, especially with regards to seeing where we can get to with this and facilitating that. So uh, very, very pleased that is all happening. And thank you for being there, Chuck. And then finally, just to say, Thank you, thank you for listening, thank you for coming. Uh, and please as well, so you never get away <laughs> just with a thank you with me. Um, please can you enjoy the sessions, I mean this is amazing. I'm going to sit down and relax now and enjoy the rest of it. Um, I'd like to ask you again just to tell everybody uh, about Adapt, I'd like you to use it, join the community and help others. If you can, give something back, be that time or be that cash, well, we take anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> consider becoming a partner, so if you're a professional organization, that produces content, that works in any which way with Adapt, consider becoming a partner. That allows you to use the logo, the brand, you get several benefits, you get to be seen to be part of it as well. Um, if you're interested in finding out more, please do get in touch as well. You can find us on the website, uh, mail me directly, and also, of course, visit us at the Learning Technologies uh, exhibition at Sound <coughs> Line. Thank you very much. Thanks.